I'd like to share with you seven different patterns that narcissists routinely use in order to abuse and take advantage of their victims. First of all, idealization. Initially, narcissists may appear charming, charismatic, and attentive. They often create an illusion of perfection, and they shower their potential victims with compliments, love, and attention. This idealization phase is designed to gain the victim's trust and admiration. Simply put, if someone tells you everything you want to hear, you can either believe that they're lying, which would be rather painful, or you believe they're telling the truth. If you believe they're telling you the truth, this means that you lower down your guard and you're more likely to listen to everything else they will tell you. A regular person might be showing a mixed assessment. They like some things in you and other things they don't like too much. And that's normal. It's part of being human and getting to know someone else. With a narcissist, they will only shower you with admiration to start. But then, of course, things get rather sour. And number two, the empathy assessment. Narcissists will carefully assess their potential victims' vulnerabilities and emotional needs. They pay close attention to the person's insecurities, the desires, and past traumas. This allows them to exploit those weaknesses later on. One of the terrible techniques that narcissists use is for them to expose their own weaknesses, their own traumas, and simply because of reciprocity, we feel the urge to do the same. Now, it's important to remember that the traumas that narcissists exposed did not necessarily happen. The difficult moments they say they went through did not necessarily happen, and even if it did, it is not a reason to expose the same level of vulnerability to someone else. One of the red flags here is to realize if what they're doing seems to come too quickly, or seems to be too intense, or seems to be too brutal, there might be something else that is going on. And this could be the person who, early in a relationship, divulges something tragic that happened to them or that seems really intense or really too much. When things seem to be happening too quickly in a relationship, maybe they are happening too quickly and there's something to be aware of. Number three, mirroring. Narcissists are skilled at mirroring the victim's preferences, the values, and the interests. And by reflecting back the victim's own desires and beliefs, they create a sense of familiarity and connection. This mirroring helps to establish a deep bond and emotional attachment. Quite often in relationships with narcissists, you have the impression that you are soulmates, that you have so much in common that it's too good to be true. And there's a simple reason. It is too good to be true. And how does this happen? It's quite easy. All they have to do is listen to what you like and play the same thing back to you. And because it seems too good to be true, we typically don't want to dig too much. I mentioned a few times a person who loved the same band as I did. And at one point I was curious and I wanted to ask, what is your favorite song by the band? And she mentioned the song that I made her listen to for the first time. So I said, well, that's the song that I made you listen to before that. What was your favorite song? And she mentioned the biggest hit that the band had. And I said, well, that's the biggest hit. But apart from the song that you'd never heard before and the biggest hit that everyone knows, which other songs do you like? And she just looked blank and said, I'm not good with names. Okay, fair enough, thought I. How about telling me which album you like or which album the song is on? And she had no idea. She said, well, I'm not very good with names. I said, okay, describe the album cover. And she had no idea about the album covers. And this is a band that has got very strong visuals on the album covers. Simply put, she'd never listened to the band. She simply saw that I like this band a lot. And all she had to do was tell me I also love this band, and that was enough for me to believe her. And it simply was not true. Number four, isolation. Once a narcissist has gained a victim's trust and emotional investment, they often gradually isolate the person from their support network. This may discourage or undermine existing relationships, making the victim increasingly reliant on the narcissist for validation and companionship. This is quite common. They will pick fights with the people around you. They will make you question the motivations of the people around you. They might suggest they're jealous. They might suggest they have hidden agendas. They might suggest that a friend wants to be more than a friend. The goal here is to isolate the victim because when the victim is isolated, they are more reliant on the person who claims to be on their side, which makes it much easier to manipulate this person. And instead of being able to simply ask your friends about strange things that are happening, you end up being more isolated and it's much easier to manipulate the person further and to hurt them further because they can't double check what's going on with people they can trust. Which leads to step five, devaluation. 
As the relationship progresses, narcissists may begin to devalue the victims. They may criticize, belittle, or demean them, eroding their self-esteem and creating a sense of dependence on the narcissist's approval. This devaluation keeps the victim trapped in the cycle of abuse. So what happens is quite simple. Initially, the narcissist has positioned themselves as being a trustworthy judge of character because they love everything they see. But all of a sudden, things change. And so we assume that we trust this person. If now they're being critical, it must be for a good reason. It must be for a tangible reason. Something must have changed, and therefore we need to regain their approval. But all of this is just a game. It's just a dynamic. These people claim to be judges, but they are not judges simply because there is no judge. If there's something they dislike, that's fine. They can dislike it. We don't need their approval. But if we've lost our support network, if we already are isolated, and if we somewhat lack self-confidence, then we probably want some approval from someone. And who is left once we've been isolated from everyone? Well, only them. And this creates these unhealthy dynamics of wanting to get the approval of someone. In order to further do this, they use number six, gaslighting. Narcissists frequently employ gaslighting techniques to distort the victim's perception of reality. They may deny or trivialize their abusive behavior, shift blame onto the victim, or use manipulation tactics to make the victim question their own sanity or judgment. This typically will happen when they challenge you and you respond and they say, you're becoming defensive, don't be defensive or you're becoming aggressive. And because you no longer have anyone else to talk to who will be giving an external point of view and maybe just saying, listen, they provoked you. You reacted in a way that seems sort of reasonable, but if they call you unreasonable, well, what does it say about them? If it's only your opinion against theirs, it might be a bit arrogant to think that your opinion is worth more than theirs because maybe you consider that you do have blind spots. And this other person means well, so they say. And so you want to take their opinion into account. But what becomes crazy is when they try to make you stop believing in yourself. It's one thing to say, you have this interpretation of events, fair enough, I have a different one, fair enough, let's just talk about it. It's something else to say, your interpretation of events is crazy. You are crazy, you are a lunatic, you are unreasonable, or something they often do, the reason why you say this is because of that. The reason why you're getting defensive is because of this thing. Or the reason why you're criticizing me is because of something else. That only works if you're a telepath, and they often claim to be telepaths. And when people accuse us of doing this, it can be rather difficult to push back without seeming arrogant. My suggestion here is, if something seems weird, recognize that it seems weird, you are entitled to be unreasonable, and they are entitled to be unreasonable. If both of you don't get along, well, that's that. One person doesn't have to bend to meet the other person. Usually, the healthy people would like to meet halfway, and narcissists refuse to meet halfway. However, if meeting halfway doesn't work for you, that's fine, it doesn't work for you. And if people don't accept you as you are, well, that's that. And if people demand that you change, well, that's that. Doesn't mean they're toxic, but it simply means that they don't accept you the way you are. And if you demand that people change, well, that's that also. If you don't accept them the way they are, then then maybe there's not much of a future together. And obviously when this happens, it means the relationship is not sustainable. So what happens next is typically hoovering and discard. After subjecting their victims to emotional manipulation and abuse, narcissists may employ hoovering tactics to regain control over them. This could involve attempts to win back the victim through promises, apologies, or manipulation. And if the victim becomes aware of the manipulation or attempts to leave, the narcissist may discard them abruptly, leaving the victim feeling confused and devastated, and probably also feeling guilty for it. So with the hoovering, always remember, they push the person into a situation where the person might be leaving or might have left, and they hoover around. They never leave the person alone, so the person can't be moving forward, can't get on with their life. And they'll often guilt trip, they'll often try to, to get the foot in the door, make promises, suggest that things could be different in order to prevent the person from moving forward. And if they realize that they've been unmasked, that the person no longer plays the game, or if they simply have an upgrade of a new supply, then they will simply discard the person terribly abruptly. This can be really confusing because in a relationship, even if things are working out, 
both people have invested time and emotions, and it's not easy to close the door as though nothing happened. Sometimes we're tempted to do it if we want to get away from an unhealthy relationship because we realize we've been duped. But with narcissists, what often happens is they say things are absolutely fine and they make promises and they say words that would indicate the relationship is going very well. And from one day to the next, they've completely disappeared and completely discarded the person. What sometimes happens then is if the new supply is not as compliant as they want or if they're a bit bored or if they if they just want a bit of amusement, they might come back and start hoovering again. And we could ask, like, why? What is the point? Well, sometimes we observe the result. And the goal of the narcissist is exactly the result they are getting. If it's to hurt you and prevent you from moving on and trying to get attention from you and trying to upset you, maybe that is exactly what they want.